And joining me here in studio, directly across from me, is Chris Wallace, the anchor of Fox News Sunday. You can follow that show at Fox News Sunday on Twitter. Check your local listings on your local Fox station. You can watch replays on FNC. He's also a best-selling author. His new book that he has here in studio with us, and if you're watching on the Fox Nation live stream, you can see the cover of it, or you will when it cuts to him. And the title of that book is Countdown Bin Laden, the untold story of the 247-day hunt to bring the mastermind of 9-11 to justice. And Chris, it is such a pleasure to see you in person for the first time in 18 months or so, I I was going to say, a year and a half. I, 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 I thought I'd gotten out of jail, but no, I'm back with you. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Countdown Bin Laden, how's it doing? Just a totally compelling read. And I think it's fair to say the definitive account of how we got Bin Laden. Well, thank you for that. Uh, it's doing great. It's the number two for the second week in a row, the number two book in the New York Times bestseller list, both hardcover and ebook, um, you know, which is nice. Uh, but I'm really proud of the book, and I'm very pleased by the reception it's gotten. It's a history thriller. It, you know, you know how it ends, but the people – I get a lot of emails from people at 2 o'clock in the morning saying, I couldn't put it down, darn you, I just finished it. Uh, and, and, you know, that that the last 100 pages, they were just on the edge of their seat because they wanted to see what happened next. There are surprises, things that have not been said before, told before, people who haven't talked before – um, it, it, it's a good book. It, you know, it just is. I'm proud of it. Countdown Bin Laden by Chris Wallace, our guest available for sale right now. Chris, I want to play a couple sound bites for you. The president finally deigned to answer some questions today. It had been a while. And he was asked about the border. This alleged whipping, quote unquote, incident, of course, came up and he decided to kind of lean into it and go nuclear to a certain extent. Here he is in cut seven. It was horrible what to see, as you saw. To see people treated like they did, horses really running them over, people being strapped, it's outrageous. I promise you those people will pay. They will be an investigation underway now, and there will be consequences. There will be consequences. It's an embarrassment, but it's beyond an embarrassment. It's dangerous. It's wrong. It sends the wrong message around the world. It sends the wrong message at home. It's simply not who we are. The Vice President Kamala Harris was on The View, a little bit of a bumpy start to that show today. We'll play that audio later. She echoed this line, cut 19. I've been very clear about the images that you and I both saw of those law enforcement officials on horses. I, I, I was outraged by it. I, it was horrible and, um, and, and deeply troubling. There's been now an investigation that is being conducted, which I fully support, and there needs to be consequence and accountability. Uh, they, human beings should not be treated that way, and as we all know, it also evoked images of some of the worst moments of our history, where that kind of behavior has been used against the indigenous people of our country has been used against African Americans during times of slavery. And um, so I'm glad to, to know that, that Ali Mayorkas, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, is taking it very seriously. And moments ago, the aforementioned Mayorkas was at the White House at the podium and talking about systemic racism and how horrified he was by all of this. And Chris, I feel like I'm losing my mind because I've watched the videos, I've looked at the images, the photographer who took the famous photograph has now come out and said, we didn't see any whipping, the photo is being misconstrued, Border Patrol says there was no whipping, there were no whips, but it has, this talking point has just been willed into existence that Border Patrol was out there whipping Haitian illegal immigrants, and the president is denouncing it, you know, from the very highest level, the biggest bully pulpit in the world. Have you seen any evidence that people were whipped? No, uh, but I have seen the guy, the Border Patrol, using their horses to intimidate and 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 push back people. I l- l- let me go with my big point, and then I'll get to the to the whipping in in the in the first place. I, when I was hearing the clip of the president, he was talking about this is embarrassing. Uh, it, it's uh, wrong, and it sends the wrong signal to the world. Yeah, I was thinking he really should be saying that about our immigration policy and the fact that 15,000 people came across this dam into Del Rio and then were had to spend 
days, more than a week, in squalor under this bridge. I mean, to me, that is the real shame here, is our immigration policy and that it allows people to come over. It doesn't just stop them. And, and that's what I think the real focus ought to be on. Yes, the, the, the horse story, the, the Border Patrol CBP on horseback uh, has become a story. I happen to think it's, a, it's bad. Forget the whipping for a second. And, and I, I understand that's one of the allegations, and there do- doesn't seem to be true, and the president shouldn't have talked about strapping as he did because that's another word for whipping. I don't think that, that the Border Patrol, they ought to be able to find a way to keep people from coming across the border, build a fence. Yeah, a wall, maybe? Yeah, I was going to say, build a fence, build a wall, have, a, have some kind of a gate so they can't walk across that dam uh, over the um, Rio Grande into Del Rio. I'm, I don't know that I think the idea of guys on horseback stopping migrants from coming by rushing at them, bull rushing them with the horses, forget whether there were whips or not. I don't think that's right either. Although, I find that I find that offensive. Really? Yes. I mean, police I do. police departments use horses and crowd control in the United States but against citizens a, all the time. But this is this is a different thing. This is people coming across the border illegally. Uh, I understand. I'm not saying they should be allowed across the border. Right. I'm saying there ought to be a less offensive way to do it, like putting up barriers or a wall. I that's all I'm saying. When it comes, I, I I think the idea, and you know, I don't think that you usually see. Horses in crowd control, racing, running at these people uh, the way that they were in, in, in American cities, the way they were at the border with these Haitians. Yeah, I, I think we can get into the specifics of crowd control and police tactics and law enforcement I happen to tactics. think that's missing the point. I do, too. Good. And I think it's actually the goal of the administration for us to miss the point, which right. is the crisis. Over so let's which, not. Let's focus on the real well, news. I, I agree. It's just I think to me during the last president – he was criticized a lot for making things up and not saying things that were in alignment with actual facts. And I think why I'm so bothered about the whipping stuff, even though I'm taking the bait from the administration, is that it's just not true, but I, they keep saying it. And I, a lot of the I, media I agree, seems I agree to be about the whipping, it. but I don't think that that lets the Border Patrol off the hook because I think the whole use of horses was wrong. Okay. That's the point I'm making. But I, again, I think that we're, that we're missing the point, which is the the real problem here is that it was allowed to happen because of the negligence of the Biden border policy. I mean, here's the problem I have with with Biden talking about a more humane policy. So they say we're going to have a more humane policy. We're going to we're going to roll back remain in Mexico. And the result of rolling back remain in Mexico is that it entices it. It, it, it says to people trying, trying to come across illegally and illegally is a big deal that. It's okay to come across the border, and if you have to wait for weeks or months or years, in some cases, to have your your immigration hearing, you'll be able to do it from the comfort of being in the United States. I think it actually would be more humane to say to them, "No, you don't 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 come over, don't be huddle under the bridge, stay in Mexico, or don't come up at all." Because I I think this half door open policy is creating a lot of problems. That, that a stricter policy wouldn't. And we have 1.5 million known border encounters this fiscal year and counting so far, plus hundreds of thousands of known gotaways. What's happening? The policy is failing. The whip stuff is a a sideshow. Right. That so I let's think stop talking they about are, the whips. The policy is a mess. Right. I agree with I you. I think that's why they are happy to repeat the lie about whipping is because you and I will sit here uh, talking no, about it. You will sit here. Them. I'm not. Ta- I'm not talking about the well, whipping. But the president is. The vice president okay, is. But and then so let's, we're all right, we've, we've covered it. Let's move on to the policy. And I think the po- real problem is the policy. The policy is wrong. And and you know I I just watched some of my orcas. Maybe this is why I'm spun up about it because he said that we inherited a broken system and we got to fix it. They're not fixing it. And and he talks about, well, comprehensive immigration reform. We all know there's not going to be comprehensive immigration reform. I agree there should be, but there isn't going to be just as a matter of political reality. So find measures that you can use that will alleviate the system. And part of it is, as an American, I'm offended at this open door that's allowing people to come in, 15,000. Wouldn't you think somewhere, it, it turns out that in Del Rio, he said this for the first time, since September 9th, they've had 30,000 people come across the border. Wouldn't you think somewhere between 100 or 1,000 and 30,000, you'd have said, okay, let's stop it? 
and what they inherited, obviously not a perfect system by any stretch, but the numbers weren't anywhere close to this in the last administration. So just to say, oh, well, you know, this is a broken process, so what can we do? Uh, that doesn't hack it. Do you have anyone from the Biden White House on Fox News Sunday this weekend? Because I, I saw some people last weekend saying they offered no one from the national security team after the admission of the, the drone strike that killed seven children. Are they offering up people? We don't to- know. Uh, you know, we have asked for uh, Mr. Mayor- Secretary Mayorkas, and we're interested to see whether they're going to make him available or not. We do know. We're going to have an exclusive interview with the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, so we'll discover, uh, discuss the issue at length. We'll also have a report from on the ground at the border, um, and we're hoping to have somebody from the administration that we can ask some of these very good questions about. I, you know, the thing about <laughs> – I'm not going to contradict myself about the whipping Uh-oh, is – Uh-oh, Chris. They won't even – discuss, I mean, somebody asked, well, what is it that you think they did wrong? And Mayorkas wouldn't even say what they did wrong. I, I think, happen to think the horses was wrong. The whipping seems to have but been But they should at least invention. have an answer to that when they're I saying agree. they're horrified. I they're agree. treating it like a, a crime against humanity. And they also didn't make a clear, uh, uh, in Mayorkas, the part of the news conference I saw, as to how many of these people from Del Rio have actually been released into the United States to wait for processing. Yes, they're supposed to see an immigration judge, but that can, as I say, take years. Over on Capitol Hill, just you know, steps from where we sit right now, Democrat leaders are having a real whale of a time wrangling votes for a number of different issues. You've got the reconciliation package. You've got the debt ceiling. You've got this bipartisan infrastructure bill. They're putting out statements. They're making noises about progress, but I'm not sure if the progress is, is concrete or tangible yet. How do you see this playing out, or is this truly fluid? Well, it's, it's absolutely fluid. There's no question about it. Um, they definitely are not going to have a government shutdown. The the Democrats are the controlling party, the governing party. They control both houses as well as the White House. There's not a chance that they're going to have a government shutdown on Friday morning. Uh, debt ceiling, they're not going to go into default. Somehow that'll get settled. The, the, the big question are the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill and the spending bill, which is now at $3.5 trillion. I suspect it'll be less. You know, I, it's absolutely fluid, and I only say this because, as a political realist, I don't see how the Democrats, with control, can't come up with a compromise. It may be a lot less than Bernie Sanders want, a lot more than Joe Manchin want. There's got to be some number between one and a half trillion and three and a half trillion, which is where they both are, that they could both hold their nose and agree to. Because it seems to me, you put the Democrats in charge, and they can't pass their own president's agenda. That is a catastrophe, and I feel political like catastrophe. Pelosi feels like she can't let that happen, and right. she's generally pretty good at whipping the votes, a different kind of whipping. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris Wallace, really? we got to use it? I feel like, so you're too young to get the reference, but I'm sure some of your listeners were, and Groucho Marx, it used to be a magic word, and when you said the magic word, a duck would come down with the magic word. That obviously today, it's whipping. Last question, very yes, briefly, sir. the least important question you'll get all week. We had a poll here on the show, and we had Jesse Waters weigh in and our colleague uh, Jimmy Fallon weigh in, and then we posted it on, on, on Twitter as well. Of the male correspondents here at Fox News, the question was, who has the best hair? It was Peter Ducey, it was Matt Finn, it was Bill Malugin. Malugin won. Thousands of people voted. Malugin won by a 17-point margin. Chris, I have to ask you, did the people get it right in your mind? Say it again. It was Peter Ducey, Malugin, and, and Matt Finn. No, Malugin. I, I agree with Malugin. You know, I sometimes I look at Malugin and I think, if I had looked like him, there would have been no stopping me. I might have been a success in this business. <laughs> well, you are a success because you've got a, a huge I could have show. been somebody. And you've got a number two best-selling book in the country, yeah, Countdown. Well, let's make it number one, Countdown Bin Laden. Countdown Bin Laden by Chris Wallace. My guest will be watching Fox News Sunday this Sunday. I'll be on the panel. Looking forward to it, Chris. That, that's a ratings booster right there. <laughs> let's hope. It's The Guy Benson Show. We'll be right back. 